Okay, there we go. I was like, but, wait, it didn't look right. <laughs> but back to the whole um, the Sandy Hook thing. Um, uh, this is something else I want to touch on. Um, and it relates to the Sandy Hooks and the roofing and the psychological abuse what something like this does to someone's psyche. Mm -hmm. You know, here go another example. You know, Cameron said in a song, you better be cautious, kid, or the boss of this will off your lid. Meaning, like, off your head, take your head off. You know, Jay-Z says something in a song called Blue Matt think Blue Magic on his album American Gangster where he said for my people that slipped became prisoners mixtapes for the visitors you already know what the business is unnecessary commissary we live that itch and Rick Ross says because uh, when I was first put on this medicine Rick Ross came up with a song that kind of scared me, and I thought that you know, I should I would never go to Florida because you know he run the streets there, and, and you know it was this thing where everybody wanted to haunt me, you know, and I just had this thoughts. Well, I always wanted to like move to Florida. He, he got like you know because people like Rick Ross would do. He come up with a song, at, responding to that, saying, "Working with the police, acting like you know me, meaning like." He wasn't a threat to me, but he also said working with the police. So you got Rick Ross saying I'm working with the police. You got Jay Z said uh, another thing Jay Z said in the song: "Up in the feds, but still holding his head. When you get home, we're gonna eat through this bread." You know. So the, you got what, the feds. What song was that for Rick Ross? Working with the police, but you acting like you know me. A song with T-Pain. Um, Is that when he was talking about somebody that was boss. going against him? I'm the biggest boss that you've seen thus far. I don't know the name of the song, but that's how the chorus went. But, but he um, he wasn't talking about him working with the police. He, he was, was talking about the person that he was talking. Which was me. Was it was, going, he was responding to what I said. So he was responding to you, and he he's saying that you was working with, with the, the police, police. Yeah. but you acting like you know him, mm -hmm. like you was supposed to be his friend. But you snitching on him. Is that what he's saying? No, he's saying that because I thought he was a threat to me, that that's why I was acting like I knew him. And uh, He said working with the police, because that means that acting like you, know you me. snitching. Meaning I'm on this medicine. I had a, I had a, a mm -hmm. friend up here in Williamsburg right. use another example. He used rappers to communicate my situation. And he said something about a rapper being used mm -hmm. to set up other rappers. Okay. You know, referring to this situation I'm in. And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking. Is that what Rick Ross was trying to say? Well, Jay-Z said that. Jay no, Jay I'm talking about on that I line. Speak, Is no, that what he was trying to say no, when he I said working Jay -Z with the police? Just say, I mean, uh, Rick Ross was just saying that I was working with the police. And I was acting like I know him. But Jay-Z specifically said, um, what did Jay-Z say? In the same song where he said, for my people that slipped became prisoners, mixtape for the visitors. He says in that same song that, try to get me, uh, DA want to indict me because fish scale is in my veins like a Pisces. And then he says something about, try as they may, try to get me on the hook. As if they tried to catch him doing something illegal, but they didn't. Right, you know, but um, and that was on the Blue Magic. Blue Magic on his song American American Gangsta. Gangsta. And then okay, Snoop so what I had to do is I had to pull the words, yeah, and so I can see, yeah, because and then um, Snoop Dogg says on the song Church, uh, if you're scared, take them to church or something. I, I don't know the title of the song. He said if you're scared, go to church. A song he did with him and Ice Cube. And he says in that song, um, 
What you scared of? You knew the job was hard when you signed up for it. You know, and Ice Cube says in that song, F these devils and they laws. Never question the size of Ice Cube. You know, balls. But that was after a year of me being on the medicine roughly. Wait a minute. And F these devils and their laws. Yeah, never question the size of Ice Cube testicles, basically. You know, it's rap music, so it's a little vulgar. (laughs) I'm okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't have virgin ears. It's okay, you can say it. Yeah, it's a little vulgar. But it's just something I just haven't heard in a while. Yeah. With the the song, so you know, I just don't and, register right now. And Snoop Dogg said, "You knew the job was dangerous when you signed up for it." That's what he said on the intro. He wasn't rapping that. He started it off by talking, and said, "You knew the job was dangerous when you signed up for it." And the crazy thing about that, when I was first put on the medicine and didn't know what kind of medicine it was on, Ice Cube came out with a song and said, "Bush runs shit like Saddam Hussein." Meaning like how Bush got Saddam killed or whatever and invaded You Iraq. said he run it like Saddam Hussein. He runs shit. Like, like Saddam, Saddam Hussein. Hussein. Like he's a mean, dictator. Not like he's a dictator. Like he's he runs shit because he took him out. But now that you say that, it could kind of easily mean what you just said too. Yeah, that sounds more like he being a dictator. Yeah, he yeah. He running a dictatorship because Saddam ran a dictatorship. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of didn't take it that way. I took it as Bush run shit like he was celebrating Bush. And see, this is why I say that. Hmm. When I was first put Like this, Cuba celebrating Bush? Yeah, in 2006. Like he was celebrating him. It, it, because this is how I took it. And I'm probably right. When I was first put on this medicine, the rappers was all for Bush. Like how I said with the game when he said, George Bush brought me back from the dead. That's why they call him the doctor, by giving me this medicine. You know, so the rappers was with George Bush before I went in the hospital. Once I got in the hospital, started having seizures. When I basically told the truth, they made me have a seizure, and I got out the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's when it was F these devils and they lost. Mm -hmm. When that same song, Blue Magic, Jay-Z said F George Bush. Um... He said, money over broads, you got it, F Bush. You know, um, it was like they was against George Bush and politicians. They was even making things, talking about calling politicians political gangsters and how they're trying to save me. And this is why Bush is still in office. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, now, I, I'm confused. Who was trying to save you? The rappers. The rappers was trying to save, save you me. at that time. Yeah. During that time frame, when yeah. Bush was still in office. Yeah. Okay. But then Obama get elected, and they forgot all about helping me. You know, it's like... Why do you think that? And which, this is why I say this, what, what I'm about to say. I don't think they was ever helping me. I think they was manipulating me and thinking that they had my back. You know, T.I. used to say the game's in trouble based upon what... The game said, brought him back from the dead. That's why they called him a doctor. And T.I. came out with a song, The Game in Trouble, Help is on the Way. This was like 2008. Where's the help? They, you know, they would... Wait a minute. The game as in the rap of the game or the game as in... It was coded, but the rap game... The, that's what I was about yeah. to say. The, the, the rap game in itself. Mm-hmm. Or they were talking about the rapper named the game. No, he... Which it, one no, is it? like a... What would you call that? Double... Is it that... Is that... What's a double entendre? Is that... That's not always sexual. It's like it's like a okay. So it's kind of like a double entendre, like a metaphor, a punchline, where the game, and you would have to be me to know to distinguish. See, because I would have thought because I know that there is a game, yeah, like like him, and yeah. and I know that there's a game, game in the rap game. Yeah, it's the rap game, but then you have a rapper yeah. named the yeah. game. That's why yeah. I'm like, which one he talking about? Yeah. So well, when you when you're yeah. trying to break it down and analyze it for me or help me understand where you're coming from, we got to really break that down because yeah, I see, know both parts. In, in a lot of ways, he's referring to both. I'm the game as in being brought back from the dead, but I'm also the rap game because like, for example, um, when they used to say Nas came out with an album say hip-hop is dead. 
referring to me. And then the South artist came out and said, hip hop ain't dead, it lives in the South. You know, so it's things like that. It's been a it's been a lot of disrespect. It's so wait, 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 wait a minute. Did we talk about Nas before? Because I remember when Nas came out with that one, but he was talking about I assume he was talking about Okay. The rap game in itself and what they out here and see, coming up with and it's really not about it's a, a lot lesson. of politics because once upon a time rap was doing a lot of politicking. Okay. Like when you had Public Enemy out yeah. there doing politics, yes. or you had X Clan out there doing politics with the rap game, but now you're telling me that it's, it's subliminal. It was about. See, I wouldn't know that. Yeah. I wouldn't know that at see, all. See, everything's subliminal, so it can't be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. So he can still continue to put it to the forefront as it's political, political. instead of about you. But. He wasn't referring in a political sense as it being subliminal. He wasn't communicating subliminally from mm -hmm. a political stance. He was communicating subliminally from a um, down south perspective of like the mumble rap and like the Migos and people like that who were not lyricists. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that's, that's when he, he's, I was, that's where, I, but see, that's if you're thing. taking somebody from my standpoint who listened to that, um, you know, when rap rolled out and knowing Nas like that, from that standpoint, and uh -huh. when he's saying the rap game is dead, he's talking about these young boys coming up now and everything mumble, is a mumble. mumble. And you not and understanding nothing because they ain't talking about nothing. nothing. Exactly. And see, the thing with this situation, everybody think rappers are the problem or rappers are the bosses or calling the shots. And like, rappers are not in control. It's the labels and the government calling all the shots, and the rappers are just the foot soldiers following orders. And that's always been the case. A rapper never been to Lancaster County. How did they know I was there? You're right. A rapper don't tap my cell phone and uncover stuff from high school where I missed, I didn't want to miss the bus, so I got dirty clothes out the hamper and spray some Febreze on. And Mike Epps talk about that on T.I. King album. You know, so Mike Epps talked about it on who? Yeah, else? when he said something about, you know, on Ti album as the interlude. I didn't it, know Mike Epps was up there. Mike yeah. Epps is on Ti album. The King album, the, the one 2006 album called King. So the Mike thing is, Epps, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta write that because you know I'm, a, I'm a, I don't want to forget it. Yeah, see. So the, Mike Epps. The thing is, these rappers are not calling the shots on Ti. King album. King album. Yeah, and which. And that was that, that came out before I was on Madison and he was talking life and death then. Talking about the Phoenix shall rise from the ashes. You know, so it, they always knew that they were sending me on a suicide mission. I'm not here eighteen years by mistake. I'm in this situation because this was the plan. Um and at the end of the day, the rappers are the snitches. Keep talking. You know, at the I end of the day But it was it Mike Epsos? At the end of the day, the rappers are the snitches, uh -huh. you know, and they're the ones working with the government on the behalf of, I suspect, the Italian mobsters, and they're playing this dangerous pop political game where they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. And they're, they're fought me for things that they are doing and trying to make it like it's me that's doing it or that's me that did it when it's really them because like another thing to prove that you know there was this book that came out called Hiding in Hip Hop where they was talking about gay rappers but that was a subliminal telling me that snitches was hiding in hip hop you know so the thing with that is it's a mind game it's a mind game okay. and with it being a mind game they do things to try to keep people from getting to the bottom of what's going on. So a lot, of, I bet you there's a lot of confusion about what this situation is about, what it is. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at uh, Centera and a black guy was there and they had another black guy uh -huh. that was a paraplegic, paralyzed from the neck down. And he came in the elevator after me. And that was like a reference I made, you know, of like, you know, I forgot what I said about 
the situation as comparing it to a paralyzed person. But they brought him in to make it like I was paralyzed. And that's not their first time using a paralyzed person. To use make, the paralyzed person to... To, to represent to, something as like a prop. To In which, yeah. I, can, I wish I could remember what I said about paralyzed people and make an example. Okay, I think that's what it was. I think I said... Uh, I, could, I think I said, you know, um, I wouldn't want to be paralyzed. I would rather be dead than paralyzed. You know, something like that I said. And I also said that being on this medicine is like having cancer. You don't know if you're going to ever die. You know? Mm -hmm. And they used to use cancer. They used paralyzed people. You know? And... You know, this per and every time I see a paralyzed person, it upsets me because I feel like they're throwing negativity at me, in which I would never harm myself or nothing like that. But just like I don't have cancer, you know, but they take these things and run with it and they throw it in my face in a patronizing way and uh, offensive way, and it's upsetting. So, like, for example, when I lived in Gloucester, it was a paralyzed guy there from the paraplegic. And I was complaining to my boss man about my circumstances. And I kid you not, the paralyzed guy had a motor wheelchair. He drove his motor wheelchair outside and started circling around the vehicle we were sitting in like a shark. Uh -huh. And it, it made me mad. And then when I would come from the store upset, having a bad day, that he would come by on his motorized uh you know, wheelchair. And one day I was, and I saw one day I was like, it was overwhelming him. Like, they were sending him out to do that. Mm -hmm. And I looked at his face one time, you could tell it, it was overwhelming him. And, you know, another day in which he did it, he made me upset. And I meant well when I said it. And I was like, Bobby, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, because my situation is not that bad. I wasn't trying to offend him, but I could find I could see how he could get offended by that. Right. You know, and because it really did make me mad. So anytime I see a paralyzed person, that they're referencing my situation and comparing me to a paralyzed person, it upsets me because it was just a thought. It wasn't something that I was manifesting in the sense of, you know, trying to harm myself. It was just a random thought, and they took it and ran with it like they do with everything else that's negative and he took it and ran with it and I'm like you know, so are you saying they were thinking you were gonna harm yourself no no they won't thinking that because they won't thinking that because it wasn't a real it wasn't a manifestation it was more of a or a belief or something I was uh, contemplating it was mm -hmm. just more of a random thought like you know um, you got lights on the computer you got like how you know stuff like that like it's just you See, when you're on a mind reading medicine, thoughts become reality. Not that you actually feel a certain way. Like, I can say, like, this is pink. Well, you'd be like, no, that's not pink, that's fuchsia. And then I can say, oh, what? You're right. But being on a mind reading medicine, it's kind of like they would take it and say, you said it's pink. I was like, but I corrected myself. Basically, they don't correct things and look at things from a face value standpoint. Mm -hmm. They they look at things as if he think this. How can we use this to gaslight him, to keep him down, to keep him in this situation? You know. But back to what I was saying with the paralyzed guy. Um, at the hospital, you know, I get mad every time I see a paralyzed person because it, it, it irritates me because I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, you hurt me and him, you know, using him to reference me. I understand, you know, my situation is serious, but you don't have to use a, a paraplegic to get your message across. You know, that's hurting him and reminding him of what he is. And So are they saying something and, during that time or just no, letting him roll around? He seemed like, the police seemed like he was upset and mad. And 
not, and I was like, you know, because, oh, it didn't like me, put it that way. So when I got out of the car, I was, got out of the hospital, I was off the elevator, got out of the hospital, I was like, you know what? I ain't going to be offensive like I was with Bobby and walk up to him and say, hey, Bobby, my situation is not that bad. You don't have to do that. I said, I'm going to take this one and keep it moving because I, I regret saying that to Bobby, even though, I, I, you know, I was mad and upset, but I meant well, you know. And, you know, so I said, you know what, this time I'm not even going to react to that. And a black couple come out of the uh, hospital and because I handled it professionally, you know, and he was like talking to his girl or wife or whatever. He was like, it ain't nothing but about money. He was like, it's all about money, you know. And I'd have had a taxi cab driver take me to the uh, emergency eye appointment. And he was like saying the same thing to me. Like, they, they got you on this medicine to make you money. And after 18 years, what is the point? So if how they making not, money? It's not drugs. You know, if the rappers are dealing drugs, that's a quid pro quo. No, and I mean by putting you on the medicine. How are they making money? Easily. Music sales are up. Movie ticket sales are up. You know, like, think about it. 2005, maybe only three movies hit a movie theater at a time. Now, with this situation, they pumping up movies left and right. You got probably eight to ten movies a month coming out of there. It's like, when they put me on this medicine, mm -hmm. so many movies started coming out, so many new record la uh, labels, so many new rappers and, and entertain mu musicians started getting record deals, and the turnover rate is ridiculous. Like I was telling you one of the times we first met, I bet you there's a lot of mad musicians who made a song that was relevant to the situation and got that payola and got a bunch of fake love. And soon as that situation was, that song was no, no longer relevant to my situation, the record label dropped them. And now they probably getting royalties, working somewhere making $20 an hour when they was making probably a million or 500,000 every six months. I bet you there's a lot of bitter, bitter musicians right now that hasn't told their story because they got payola. T.I. Fortune, he could, his fortune is because of me. Like, T.I. at one point in time was worth $60 million. I bet you in 2005, T.I. didn't have $100,000 in his bank. But they put me on this medicine mm -hmm. and there's a connection with him and me and he started making all these songs about me. Mm -hmm. And the Radio kept playing it on spin with payola. And I'm not saying it wasn't good music, it was. But it was sponsored. It was, you know, advertisement, which kind of like that's what payola is. Like you're promoting something and, and forcing people to like it. And if it's something that's a good product, it's kind of like you go to the mall and they got in the, the food and they give you something on a toothpick, like, come try this. And then you're like, oh, this is good. Next thing you know, you're buying it. That was happened with T.I. album. You know, it was like, try this. And then people was like, oh, it's good. So people bought it. And that's payola, you know. And, you know, he his, his whole fortune come from rapping about me. You know, and, you know, so there's a lot of bitter artists and musicians that haven't told their story about all the payola and fake love they got from the labels. Because again, the rappers are not calling the shots. If you go look at um, the name of albums prior to 2006 and look at the name of albums now, you'll see a big difference. You can tell that these albums are about my situation, even though you can't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. In a courtroom, that's enough for conspiracy because if so, if the, you know so they can hit these rappers with conspiracy they don't need me to snitch to hit these rappers with conspiracy they don't want to because at the end of the day the rappers are working for them you know so this is not something where you know I'm getting people in trouble or snitching the rappers are the snitches and they're the ones conspiring with the government and 
basically trying to mass manipulate the people. And yeah, so you'll see that, you know, and I may not even be living because this medicine may have been to kill me by then, but you'll see maybe 10 to 15 years from now, like, like, you, like everyone always do, that I was right about a lot of stuff I said, and then you're gonna see people come forward you know, and be like, you know what, Terrell was right, or, you know, Terrell, or they're going to see people come out with stories and be like, yeah, these labels used us, like it always happened, and that's by plan, you know, and I seen Willie, Willie D say that, he was like, they try to kill the um, fight in you, and then they celebrate you later, which I don't expect to be celebrated, but I expect the truth to come out later, but it's going to be after the fact, kind of like with Iraq, with the false flag Iraq ap uh, operation, and then fast forward to 2023 after a million innocent people died, a couple hundred thousand soldiers died, George Bush get on TV and say, yeah, Saddam didn't have weapons of mass destruction, and he wasn't working with Al-Qaeda. Well, they knew that before they invaded, you know, so it was a false flag, just like this situation was a false flag operation. This wasn't something where I actually done something to people. They made it all up. You know, they spied on me illegally for three plus years, made up a situation, and used rappers to lie on me and try to make it like I did this, I snitched, I did that, and I was snitching on somebody. I had no business with no rappers never been arrested so how am I snitching on someone you know they, they made all that up to get me on the medicine because they wasn't coming to me directly they made it all up so they could threaten me threaten my family and force our family hands in this situation to where they could roofie me with this medicine against my free will and get my friends and everyone on and everyone on board with it because they thought I was in danger that's what they did, like, you know, and now my friends probably were like, damn, my family, like, well, damn, you know, Terrell came to us and was like, what's going on, what's going on with the STD stuff, with everything, the craziness that was going on in the community, mm -hmm. Terrell asked us about all of this, and we ignored Terrell, we, even one friend said I was deranged, you know, and I'm like, you know, fast forward to now, they like, they probably like, yeah, Terrell, right. And, you know, I had a, my guard, well, my, my guard brother, he said something, you know, I was talking to him one day, and it was like 2014, and he was kind of like, and he said this, he was mm -hmm. like, you know, things ain't like they used to be, you know, in the sense of everybody hanging out, all our friends hanging out. He was like, it ain't like it used to be, you know. And he was, so, in so many words, saying it was kind of like a footloose, you ever seen the movie Footloose? Where an accident happened and the whole town is traumatized by it? I don't And that's what that's what he was kinda saying. Like he movie? was like, you know I remember the dancing from the movie, but yeah, I don't remember. He was kinda saying that like this is kinda like a footloose situation and like every all my friends and family are traumatized by it because it wasn't something that we didn't see coming. You know, they may not have saw it coming, mm -hmm. but I did. And I was coming to them like, you know, what is going on? What is going on? But wouldn't nobody tell me nothing. And that was orders by the dangerous entity working for the government to keep people from, to not tell me what was going on. Because if they had told me what was going on, it would have been harder for them to roofie me. It would have been harder for them to frame me for attempted murder. You know, so, yeah. Like, they compartmentalize everything and pretty much done things in a way to where, you know, pe and people know this, but people just not talking about it, you know. And, you know, it, it's a situation where it's the got out of hand, you know, and it's been going on for too long, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to stop it. Like, I, I, I don't really rock with these rappers because even they said that they get, that they are tired of cleaning up after the government. Like, and they don't seem to be because they continue to do it, you know. And I think the money's rolling in for them right now, 
and they ain't doing nothing good with their money but buying luxury clothes, you know, but whatever tickles their fancy, like, you know, I feel like these rappers, you know, are tripping, like, you know, I feel like the community of Williamsburg is tripping. Why you, know, you say that? Because I look at this situation like, um, where are you drawing, like, where are you drawing your reference points? Like, the, the accusations and then the claims and the stuff that they respond to. I can tell you a decade ago when I was living in Gloucester, I was thinking something and uh, it, it was military base, military, on a military base in a sense, uh, bases. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, I can't remember the details, but as I, I was working mm -hmm. and as I got in a car, a car pull up in front of me and says, if you can't stand behind our soldiers, stand in front of them. Meaning like be a, um, what you call it when you- uh, A target. A, a target, but not just that. What is, what, what is it when they line people up and shoot them? What is that called? God, I forgot what it's called. Oh my gosh. Because it you was- made me draw a blank. Yeah, um, I, f I can't think of it. Because actually there's a governor in Louisiana or Kentucky trying to bring that back to where you, you stand up and you, sh and you gun people down versus electric chair hanging. I, I, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, we almost done here. But uh, she was like, the li license place was like, if you can't stand behind our soldiers, stand in front of them. You know, and I said to my boss, it was like three or four of us in a car. I was like, you know, the things they choose to entertain, you know, and I, I'm critical of the military, not in the sense of the soldiers being at fault. I don't like their orders that they follow. It ain't about the soldiers, it's the orders that they follow from like crooked politicians, you know, which they heroes to us, but I hate to say this, to other countries, they may be considered terrorists. And that's a, just a vantage point, you know, but I won't call them a terrorist because I got a cousin in the army that's a veteran. He did five tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait. Uh, all, uh, I, don't, I don't know how many in each, but he did like five tours. May, I think it might have been six. I got a cousin that was a Marine mm -hmm. that, uh, did a tour in Iraq. My brother was in the Navy, got a cousin right now in the Air Force, and my stepfather was in the Army Reserve. So that lady with that bumper sticker talking about standing in front of them, how many people you got serving in the armed forces? Probably zero. You know, that's that rhetoric, that political rhetoric people use to try to push politics. You know, as long as someone else making the sacrifices, they can stay in bold and speak on it, but if they had to make it themselves or their children would have to make it, mm -hmm. then, then they, they, it'd be a different story. You know, and I, I don't like stuff like that. You know, and- It's a firing squad. Firing squad, yeah. <laughs> I knew yeah. that was gonna come yeah. up, was driving yeah. me crazy. Yeah, so that's what she was like, like standing in front of them like a firing squad and let them gun you down. And I'm like- Gotcha. You know, your reference points, you know, and I say that all the time, like the things people choose to entertain and the reference points they use, it just baffles me because they make me look bad. You know, they only entertain stuff that make me look bad. Mm -hmm. Their reference points is only the negative, they only respond to negative stuff. Like the man in my town being a drug dealer, they don't entertain that. You know, they, they actually acknowledged that that was the case on Wavy uh, News and kind of said I was annoying for keep talking about it. Yeah, so they won't entertain stuff like that. So this is the problem I have. Now, you see me, think about everything you done heard about me and whether you're willing to say it or not, how bad my reputation is because of this medicine. And at the end of the day, all of that is a choice. It's not something where it's all on me. It's all a choice because at the end of the day, these are the things that they're willing to entertain. Stuff that makes me look bad. And at face value, none of the stuff in my reputation is true. 
you know, none of it is true. But they entertain it and exaggerate it and manipulate it to make it look true. And then they crucify you for it. And this is what I always said about these people. It's the big three. They either lying, flat out lying, lying by omission, or creating a breeding ground for such things to take place. That's pretty much this whole situation. And think about my reputation and how they are crucifying me and the things they, they reference and the things they are and the things that they say about me and ain't none of it true. You know, and it, it is upset because, you know, and this is my own people. These are and I don't mean family, I mean my own community of people, you know, that's supposed to be fighting for me. You know, and my family said that, like my mother said, damn man, you you catching it from both sides. My cousin said, you know, that the community the local community does the same shit. And it was his exact words. They do they, they, they do the same shit referring to what the rappers and the media is doing, you know. And I even had a random guy at Colonial Behavior Health complain about how I was being treated in Williamsburg. You know, so and he also mentioned the threats that the danger me and my family was in. He mentioned that too. You know, so he works at No, he he was a patient. Okay. Yeah, he, gotcha. he was a patient, but he mentioned so the danger. Before we start on another one. Let me get you. Oh, oh yeah. So, you know, but So we won't add no more to this one. <laughs> 